everyone. So, uh, welcome back to uh, For the Love of the Game uh, Cricket Podcast. So, the World Cup is almost here. And uh, so, so it's time for a review and everything, right? So, we thought that we can do it in a different kind of a way. So, we can do it maybe venue-wise because like, like, like normally in Crick Buzz and ESP and Crick Info, whatever, whatever, wherever it is, so people normally like read wise, team wise, or like the strengths, weakness, and all those things. We so we thought that we could change it up a bit and like venue wise, we can see the stats there and the head to heads and all these things over there. So that gives us a different perspective about the strengths and weaknesses and everything. So maybe it, it can be a fun thing to do. So uh, we have like a so Prakash and Pranav uh, joins with me as Everybody. well. So yeah, so hope uh, all my view all the viewers are doing well as well. So a happy weekend to you all as well. So let's uh, begin with uh, so uh, so before we go into the venues like first uh, like we are basically covering Mumbai and Chennai mainly today. So that that will be our focus. But apart from that, like uh, before we begin into those venues, so we can start out with a basic general overview of how things are. So I will just show you some. Uh, Stats, so and credit is to Utkarsh Tomar, right? For the stats, so that that is a like thanks to him for providing us with these. Yep, uh, he gave us the data set, and uh, we tried to maneuver that uh, using his and our own work. So let's let's have a look at the general ODI statistics. Yep, so yep. here we go. This is the first one. So this is the number of matches per season. It's year-wise, it is separated out. And like, so what do we basically learn from here? Let's find out. So uh, so basically what, what you see here is, is something interesting. I mean, if we if we uh, try and break this down by 10 years each, uh, you look at the decline of ODI cricket. I mean, uh, everyone's talking about how uh, important the World Cup is I mean, I've I've heard a lot of people saying it's the pinnacle of cricket. I mean, everybody craves for a World Cup uh, any season. So if you look at say from 2013 onwards, uh, how many ODIs have we played? It's, it's it's very less. And comparatively, I think uh, there were more ODIs in the 2003-04 season. Uh, you know the. It's it's probably because of the T20 cricket that, that these things have minimized. But what we what we observe here is that the pitches also have gone gone flat. So that's the reason why we have come up with this stat that you know the more T20 cricket or T10 cricket is increasing, we have more flat wickets coming in, and this World Cup could be a refresher to those like three of us and many others who like 270 to 80 games. You know, basically it's not flat. You have both the balance for bat and ball. You have to adapt yourself, play out for three overs, and then get a result. So I think I think it's an incredible start. I mean, True. last ten years have been so so disappointing for me. Yeah. So this is kind of nice because like uh, so if we see that I think twenty twenty can be understood because of like there was a COVID time over there, so that there's a dip there. But like twenty three twenty four has actually been a significant drop from the last last year as well. So, yeah. yeah, that's something to watch out for. Post the World Cup as well. I think this World Cup is very important in the sense that if we if, if it can capture the imaginations of the people, if we can deliver, like, good, proper, like, close cricket matches, then I think this format, like, maybe can be, like, otherwise, I think it's a really, like, um, a tricky format right now because with Test and T20, they are providing two different spectrums, right, of, like, the cricket audiences. So, this is kind of in the mid. So, hope because I personally enjoy ODI cricket a lot. So, hopefully, like, we have a good World Cup and, like, it keeps on rolling. So, let's see how it goes. So, yeah. So, before, like, let's move on to another stat. So, yeah. This is, I think, let's, yeah. Yeah, so this is this is the top ten cities with most number of matches since the last decade and a half, I mean, or or even more. So if you see, what's interesting here is how many Asian continent pitches do you see in here? Uh, forget Abu Dhabi and Dubai because they are they are absolutely flat beds, but you see only Mirpur and Colombo. So the teams are not acclimatized to the sort of cricket that's been played in India. Uh, 
I'm not talking about the domestic views, but I think Prakash will have more views on this. Um, <clears throat> why don't you finish with this and then I'll add on to what uh, what you have to say. Yeah, uh, what's, what's heartening to see here is, though it's less, but there is more ODI cricket in Dublin. Uh, and Ireland has been getting some decent ODI cricket, even though it's it's a practice game for England. They take it. They don't take it very seriously, but they have been getting good amount of cricket, which is heartening to see. Uh, RPCS Colombo has been getting more games because of, of course, the re recent Asia Cup, and Sri Lanka has been hosting more cricket due to their crisis. And I think that's again helping their tourism part. Uh, last last week when we spoke to Karthik, he he mentioned the way he enjoyed Sri Lanka's hospitality. So that's something that. That's helping them, but I, I'm actually surprised not to see any India win. Yeah, fair enough. So, for my observation of this is, if you see Mirpur, right, that's a huge spike there. So, I think Bangladesh mostly does not play, does not encourage a lot of big teams to come come at their home and play test matches. So, I think their main like focus is on like ODIs and T20s right now. So, I think that's that's why we see a like huge spark in say Mirpur and someone like say Colombo as well. So, because like if you focus on the big three, right, India, Australia, England, they are they play like five match test series and all these things. So, and I I feel that like somehow the lesser ranked nations play more ODI cricket right now than the like the big three, the top three uh, nations. I think so. That's why in this stat I don't see any India or something like that. So that's kind of like that's a like good 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 stat as well. So that's the thing. So yeah. So like Prakash, do you have anything to add here? Or we move on to the next. Yeah, just to answer. Just to answer Pranav's question and then we move on. The reason why India will never feature here is, number one, we have 50, 36 international grounds or probably which is even more than that by now. That's number one. Yeah. Number two, if you, if you, if we, you know, take a deep look into these stats, these are all city-wise. Again, India will never feature here because of the A, number of grounds and then B, um, you know, the fact that if this country hosts any kind of series, there are only these many grounds that will get the games at the end of the day. May it be England, Australia, any country. So, India will never feature in these kind of stats. Going back to the previous stat that was there, I think ever since COVID has happened, uh, cricket is going the football way. This, this whole reason why we are excited about Indian team right now is because we've had these 15 players together after almost 18 months. It's either been a case of injury or whatever, but to keep things relevant, the, um, in this particular situation, you will not find Indian teams around or Indian venues around in that for that matter. And uh, yeah, that's about it for this. We can move on to the next slide. Yeah, that's a like fair point. So the next we have, I think, is. Uh... Next, we have, I think, is the number of wins uh, by team, is it? We're sharing the same start again. Okay, okay. One minute. Just hit the right arrow from <laughs> Yeah, this is, this is by venue. So, exactly what Prakash was talking about. Uh, Harare Sports Club features here due to the ICC World Cup qualifiers. Uh, yeah, there's there's no you know brainstorming about it. Dubai features here because Pakistan almost played a decade of cricket after the Sri Lanka aftermath that happened. Uh, I'm happy to see Sydney because it's more like India kind of wicket. It it spins a lot and then helpful for batters around. Apart from that, pretty again. I I am quite surprised that I don't see India venues, but again, I get the idea that every stadium wants to host every international game that gets, unless they are Lucknow. Um, yeah, in interesting thing is that uh, you know Share Bangla again features here, which is which is interesting. Yeah, and lots of cricket in UAE as well. So we see here, so lots of ODI cricket in UAE. So. Yeah. I think right now it has it has been a bit declined as well. So I think in the 2020 season, like uh, in that time, that time we had a lot of cricket going in, even with the T20 World Cups and stuff. So lots of cricket happened that time. So since yeah. like cricket has like come back to Pakistan, I feel that it has like declined a bit in UAE. So let's uh, so move on to the next uh, next one. Okay, so now do we come on to the venue of the of, of India's first game? 
Yeah, we can like uh, move on to this. Uh, like, uh, what do you want to start with, Mumbai or Chennai? Which one? Chennai, obviously, that's the first game. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so yeah. So go ahead, Prakash. So about Chennai. So first okay, game. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so first, can you open that website that I sent you? Yeah, Cape.com, sure. which I can hit to hit. Sure. Sorry for the wait. Can you scroll down a bit? Yep, sure. Okay, before, sorry for the pause, but this particular game where India starts off is whoever wins this game potentially reaches the semi-finals. I'll tell you why, because when you have nine league matches, so when a team starts off, your target is to win six. And you'll have a few easy games, you'll have a few tough games, but then in general, when this encounter happens between India and Australia, that team, mostly, barring a few World Cups, except like the 92 and the 92, uh, 9 World Cup, they don't. They make the semis in most cases, and in some, some cases, they go on to win it. So far, India's record is, you know, 4-8, which is not great. But if you scroll down a little bit more on this side, come down a little bit more. This is a great website. It's Kale, so for easier stats. Now, yeah. If you look at the la uh, the number of games we've had, in 83 and in 87, we played each other twice. And same in 2003, where we had a final and we got spanked in both games. Um, I'll just put bring everybody's attention onto this 87 game, which India lost by one run. This was at Chennai. And if you look into the scorecard, both the teams made 280 plus. An interesting story in this game is that Dean Jones hit two sixes and then in the break, what happened was Kapil Dev went to the umpires and said a particular boundary which was given was actually a six. The score changed and, the, and India ended up losing the game by one run. But what happened was there were two scorecards around and both one scorecard showed a different score and the other scorecard showed a different score. Both teams thought they won the match. That's the sort of encounter you can expect at Chennai. And six months before this game, there's been a tight test at this venue. So... Uh, in Chennai right now, you're going to see a very, very well fought game. Now, if you go back to the other, uh, other three links I sent you, were the last three yeah. one-day matches that we played in Chennai. The last game I think played here was between Australia earlier in March of this year. I think the scores were 280 plus in both. This thing, India lost the game by a few runs. If you can just go and look into that scorecard. Yeah. There's a reason. Why. Because... Many people have just said for granted that India, uh, Chennai is going to turn. It's going to turn if you're a good spinner, yes. You'll get, you'll get purchase off the pitch. But uh, if you're a good batsman, you will make runs. 280 plus is something you can definitely expect. Um, even going back before that, there was a game between India and West Indies. Again, India lost over here. But uh, that was also a 289 score, if I'm not mistaken. And um, Puran took down Kuldeep Yadav that Correct. That is the game. So, um, the game before that, I don't remember. That was in 2017, if I'm not mistaken, if uh, yep. somebody can bring it up. Uh, in that game also, it I think it was played in the month of October, if I'm... This game was played in March of this year. So, you have a sample size of 269 and two India lost over here. If you go back to the other scorecard, the previous one, this was played in the month of March. We're going to play this game in October. Yep. I sent you three links of this. Let's no, no, go to 2017, the third one. The third one. I've sent you the link, uh, Saptak. Yep. Uh, the next and the next step. It's, it's open already. The one of the yes. best. Yeah, this, this, was the, yeah. this is the December yeah. one. So you can see the scores over here. India makes 287, West Indies makes 291. There is no mention of if you, even if you scroll down a little bit further down. Let's see what the spinners do. 
there is not much to speak about. Even yeah. if even if spinners have taken wickets, they've gone for plenty. Now come down. Let's take India sample side of spinners. As in the spinner didn't take a wicket at all. Fair so I don't, and and not only that, the ICC has taken over the these these grounds and pitches. So. There is no such thing as home advantage or interference from the outside or doctoring a pitch. There's no chance of that. You, let's go back one more step to the 2017 uh, game, if you've got that scorecard. Here you've got a thrashing. This was in 2017, yes. Now, here you have a thrashing by India. And here you can, but then if you just go up, I think this game was played in September. Just go yeah. up. And September, September, rain September. September. Okay, still a 281 score was put on. Now, if we look into, and Rane was opening at that time, my God. So, come down again and let's see Australia spinners. Zampa was there, went for 1 for 66. If you come down, let's see what our Indian spinners did. Chayan took 3, but went for, he went for five, 6 and over. Kuldeep took 2, went for 8 runs and over. Ardik took two wickets again. Ardik doesn't matter in this. So this thing about only spin dominating at this venue is I don't think it's 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 right. And it's there in the this thing, in the scores that are available over here. So to just cap it off, there will be a 290, 285 plus score on this venue, hopefully, because you're playing it at the month of October. And uh, Chasing should be a problem under lights. That's something that I have a feeling that will happen yeah. in this game. Yeah, so uh, just add on to what, what Prakash has been mentioning. The stats that I have uh, with me right now for Chepok is what we saw in IPL was very less due. Uh, the due was was absolutely not there. I mean, from, from what I saw or from what I heard, there was no due and ICC is again controlling. I have saw reports, I've seen reports that ICC is trying to minimize due. Uh, the one interesting stat here is out of the 23 matches that have been played, the teams batting first have won 14 of them. That's a win percentage of over 70 uh, in one-day internationals. So, chasing under lights is difficult in Chepok. Uh, and, I, and I take it hands down because it's not because of the due that, that it becomes easier to chase. Uh, it's it's because of the traditional venue conditions that it becomes easier to chase because, uh, you know, the amount of sun that boils down into the surface because you have a 2 p.m. start, assuming that you have three hours of bowling, the pitch, you know, settles down decently enough and the ball comes onto the bat. And with Australia only having one frontline spin uh Remember, there's no Agar and they'll rely on Labushen and Smith to actually bowl uh, those extra overs alongside Zampa. Then it'll be even more difficult for them. So, probably it will be a track which will support pace a lot more. And uh, I'll go back to the stat that I had posted in 2022, before our World Cup last year, that uh, our top three uh, against pace average 60 plus. That's that's including Virat, uh, Shubman, and Rohit. I need not mention KL and uh, Hardik because of their back, uh, back foot punches and shots. So it won't be easy win for India, but it won't be difficult either. I mean, there are no two ways about it. I'll just add another thing. Maybe this is old news, but I don't know if you guys remember this ground has undergone renovation. The yeah. over seating capacity used to be about 50 something thousand, and uh, now it's about 30 something thousand. They've broken places out so there's more circulation of air. So, you know, at yeah. night, you never know, the ball might start to swing and seam also. You never know. Yeah, but uh, we saw that in the IPL as well. I mean, uh, I think if we go back to Qualifier 1, where Gujarat choked Chennai Super Kings uh, while chasing. It, it was difficult. I mean, despite being Chennai's home ground, they were not able to chase. So, that's that's something that I really look forward to, that India bats first, posts around something around 300, then it, it's their game to lose. So, yeah, that's about it for Chennai. Let's move on to Mumbai now. Yeah. 
and just to add yeah. one thing so like uh, we just hope that i was seeing a few warm up matches like going on so it was all like uh, due to rain it, they all got paused or something so i just hope the rain stays away this world cup so we get like a good proper like full action so anyways yeah so let's uh, move on to like uh, mumbai yeah prana go ahead yeah yeah uh, uh, while you're opening the links that i had sent you uh, thanks to esp and trick and for for storing out these these uh score cards i i just have you know one or two stats that explicitly stand out for one kd is every odi game that has been played that is 23 games all have produced results i mean there has been no washed out game whatsoever in whichever season you play uh, rain gods have been kind so uh, there are no washed out games in in one kd the other thing is that unlike chennai uh, you can't predict which way to go when you win the toss because uh, you know it's neck on neck for batting versus bowling first when you when you bat first you win 11 games out of the 23 when you bat second you win 12 games that's actually neck on neck there's nothing to separate probably chasing is more easier under lights because of the sea breeze that you get uh, it's it's more like ahmedabad cricket where you have some sea movement initially but uh, with with due i think uh, it it could be easier to chase red soil wicket you you can expect more bounce but uh, again one kade has five strips and and icc might prepare all the five strips that that we have so if we if we look at the first game that we have here uh, it, it it was it was a low scoring encounter and ravindra jadeja end up ended up being the man of the match So if you if you scroll down uh, and we look at Mitchell Marsh here for a moment, he scored eighty one, uh, and I did not explicitly mention that how Mitchell Marsh faces his innings because if you if you look at it, he tries to maneuver the ball versus pace initially. I mean, he tries to of course uh, the the last ODI against South Africa is not an example, but if you see the uh, game which they won uh, against India recently. he tried to you know pace his innings well so he tried to uh, put the bad, bo- bad balls away plays exceptionally well of the back foot so you know in one k day that should help him uh, so if we come down to the bowling part of it uh, here pacers actually enjoy a lot i mean they 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 have, they have shared about seven wickets out of the 10 that have, that that were picked uh, and this was a 130 pm start so whatever matches we are discussing is is 130 pm start uh but 30 minutes i am not sure how, how much difference it will make but uh this is the this is pretty much the side that played uh, this this game it's it's uh the series in january that that happened uh against the chennai game so if you go down and and we see uh what was the status uh, for india uh kl rahul got a good 75 uh again like i said uh pace took wickets here stark took two uh stark took three in fact stonish took two so bowlers who can move the ball around using their arms or, or rather hand out of the hand uh, can actually get more purchase here that's that's the reason why because uh i think mohammad siraj will be very lethal i'd be tempted to play ravichandran ashwin on on mumbai because he'll get his 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 sort of bounce against sri lankan left handers we have a lot of lefties up top so if we go to the other game that we that we have which was against australia and back then uh if you go to the second tab aaron finch used to play and he, he they they just stream rolled us i mean they just won by 10 wickets i think if you go to the second tab sort of yeah and they won by uh, they won by 10 wickets and the average score that you see here is is again 240 to 50 uh the wickets that that they got and back then shikhar dhawan also played uh if you come down you'll see that kane richardson and mitchell stark were the pick of the bowlers uh spinners hardly got wickets so just like what prakash mentioned 
in mumbai uh, you won't see a lot of spinners playing a role uh, you can probably uh, play one spinner and and the other pacers i don't have to look at india's bowling because mm-hmm. all were out, out of shackles because we, we won by we lost by 10 wickets actually so if yeah. we go to the 2017 new zealand game or uh, um here again it, it was a 280 280 score and new zealand chased that down comfortably uh and if you look at this uh virat scored a brilliant 100 um back then dinesh karthik was also playing and dhoni was also playing uh but if you if you come down to the bowling score card again pacers took eight wickets so what i'm trying to see or or rather seven wickets uh santner took one wicket so what i'm trying to see say here is that pacers and spin bowlers using the higher arm action bowlers like santner bowlers like ashwin will get more purchase of this wicket you know finger spinners get more purchase of this wicket people like jadeja will get purchase of this wicket but people like say zampa or or for that matter leg spinners uh, say kabri or shamzi or somebody like that they won't they won't be able to get a lot of purchase from here i remember one game where uh, ab de villiers and faf du plessis went mad and scored around 450 right. plus uh that's that's one of game but you won't get that sort of wicket here and it depends on what sort of position india will be by then uh because they would have played already i think five games or something uh and it depends what sort of surface they'll get because uh the scheduling has been such that you have enough gap between each games for each venue so yeah that's that's pretty much it uh i can't pick out what you do after you win Yeah, so just to like, uh, just for knowledge purposes, I'm asking you. So like, Mumbai is red soil, right? So that makes uh, like bounce bounce is nice. So the bounce. So I think that's yeah. why the finger spinners are gonna get like people who do over spin are supposed to get more like uh, like yeah. The that, right? the ones the ones who release uh, using the high arm actions. Correct. Uh, like I mentioned, even Aksar Patel for that matter, uh, he'd have been even more efficient here because uh, his movements through through the hand. and so the hand variation is more i mean uh, his subtle action changes are actually efficient here at jadeja who is more of a crease bowler use the crease bowler now ashwin has to make up for both so right. probably they'll get more purchase of this wicket i won't i am not saying kuldeep won't get purchase of this wicket but he'll have to adjust to his lengths very quickly so that's that's something that that we'll have to wait for you know another thing i'd like to add <clears throat> as we keep going deeper into this venue episodes and we you know dissect each venue as it is so one thing you'll come to realize is you cannot go with a a set strategy for every game number one but two the entire 15 needs to play whether it be surya whether it be shami whether it be bumra and number three you've got to rest your bowlers because you don't want to get to the semis with overcooked bowlers who are who played basically every match so and as you keep going to each uh, destination that we are playing in sometimes it will be spin you are playing new zealand at dharmshala which we will do in the next episode and there also there are a lot of interesting things that will come out so again i think the bcci has done a very good job in picking this team each person deserves his spot you can talk about samson but by and large i don't think there is a better set of cricketers in this country at the moment yep and i think uh... Surya's efficiency in Mumbai would would be would be serious because, uh, you know, you you are of course thinking of dropping or maybe excluding one spinner and adding a pacer. Hardik does that job for you, and then you can play Ashwin and Surya. So probably that sort of combination is what they are looking at because you are playing semi-finals here in Mumbai as well. If India qualifies, so that's the reason why I am saying that people who have good pull shots will come effective in Mumbai. It, that's there are no two ways about it. Also, this whole thing about playing Shami, Bumra, and Siraj in the same team—I don't know if it is going to be that feasible. At least for the first few knockout games. I mean, not knockout games. The first few league matches. You play this team in the semis or the finals. That's a different issue. By then, you know your team has confidence. Batsmen, you know who are in form. I don't think that will be 
you can't play Bumra in all nine games. He gets injured, or God forbid, anything happens to any of the bowlers for that matter. You're in deep trouble. So yeah. I don't think the more and more we go into this this thing, and you're looking at the number of injuries that have already kept happening. I think yeah. yesterday in Sri Lanka there was an injury. Okay, people have taken okay. precautions. Sakibul Lassan got injured, and they're mainly mainly the the, the the largest data pool of people who are getting injured are bowlers. So you yeah. want to take care of all of them right now. That's all that I wanted to say on that. Yeah, and just one thing I like I want to add is that I think India's last match is against Netherlands, right? So if like that's a like a good thing to have because like by I, I'm hoping India will qualify by that stage of the like tournament. But like if by any chance they mess up a bit in the so that last game helps them to like actually go for the run rate or something. So like so that's a good game to have as a, as a last game. Like Pakistan is having Netherlands as the first game, so that's like not that much helpful. I feel so that's a good uh, scheduling strategy. I mean, maybe you can say it, it, it works it's in a both small way. ground too. I mean, it's, yeah, it's in a small ground it's in Chinnaswamy. So, small boundaries, flat wickets. You can get 400 scores and bowl Netherlands out for 200, 250. I mean, sorry, but I mean, yeah, Netherlands, yeah. you can't rule them out. Yeah, they that's what. So, don't forget, yeah, Netherlands have made 374 to beat West Indies and qualify for this World yeah. Cup. In yeah, super, don't rule them out. 30 runs yeah. in one Super Bowl. Don't, don't rule them out and they have their big players back. They will upset one major team. I won't be surprised if they do that and so will Afghanistan. But anyway, that's for, for later. We will talk about all that later. Let's... Sure. So I guess, uh, yeah, so I guess this is what, what we had for today. So, like, uh, thank you all for, like, watching this. And so, we will come back soon with uh, so other venues. So, be it Dharamshala, Lucknow and all these venues. So, like, we will cover all of them so subsequently in the coming week. So, thanks again for watching. Do provide us with feedback. And what are your thoughts about the, like, matchups and everything about this World Cup? So, like, key, like, key, like, do you, do you feel that, like, venue-wise it's a good thing to do? Or do you feel like, no, you follow a fixed template depending on your team's strengths and weaknesses? So, that can also be a debate. So, anything, however you feel. So, please do drop in the comments as well. And you can connect with us on uh, Twitter as well. So, we have a, like, a... Uh, growing a Twitter page as well, so on our X page, so for the Law of the Game of Cricket podcast, so you can drop, yeah. drop in just, and follow us there as well. Something more to add. Uh, yeah, so we, yeah. we have yeah. one of our friends, uh, you know, selling the, or rather replica of 2003 Nostalgic Jersey, uh, so we have linked that down below, go and have a look at that, uh, wear them, uh, I have my one coming my way, uh, probably try that and you know, if you like it, do do share the feedback with us. Yeah, I mean, like, we saw the design, so it was, like, pretty, like, nice as well. So, like, yeah, please do check them out. So, and, and, so it will be, like, good for everyone. So, thank you all. So, thank you all for, okay, like, bye -bye. thank you all for joining. Bye.